Well, Eric, it's been a while. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> I'm 25 years old, I only live to 50, so I tune naught. Do you mind introducing yourself to everyone? Sure. My name is Eric Randall, uh, I'm a meteorologist and I've just spent a year in Antarctica. So Eric, at what moment did you first realise that you actually arrived in Antarctica? Well, for me, uh, it was definitely when we saw the ice shelf for the first time. It's a massive, vast wall of ice, uh, about 40 metres high. And that just really showed off the beauty of Antarctica. I think that was the first time I, would, I was saying to myself, wow, I'm here. Um, but alongside the beauty, there's also the danger. And we experienced a storm about two days after we arrived at the ice shelf. And that really cemented how dangerous you know, this place can be. So yeah, that was truly the first time I realized, okay, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the actual emotions that went through you <laughs> yeah so i mean at the time i was 24 years old <laughs> so i thought to myself when we experienced the first storm what on earth did you get yourself into because i had never experienced anything like that you know the ship after the storm because we were still on the ship at the you know while the storm was happening um, we saw the aftermath and it was just incredible Seeing the ice flow um, on, on the ship, the scars of the ice left over on the decks, um, how the rooms on, on top of the ship were just filled with and covered with ice and snow. Um, yeah, so it was, a, it was mixed emotions. I think I was definitely excited. It's a, new, it's a new place. It's a new area that I've never explored. Um, but yeah, mixed emotions, happy, but also quite nervous. <laughs> a little bit of excitement? Yes, definitely, definitely. At what point did you have to make this transition from the ship to your new base and how did this all play out? Yeah, so we were on the ship for roughly a month or so before we needed to leave. Um, you know, just because the weather was so bad, it started freezing up around the ship. The water was getting frozen and I think the, the ice was about one, one meter to two meters thick. So after a month, there was, an, there was a gap in weather and we were able then to leave the ship and get onto the, the ice shelf. Um, I stepped foot on the ice shelf on the 1st of January, 2022 at four o'clock in the morning. I remember because I, I wanted to note that down. <laughs> and then once we stepped on the ice shelf, we had to take a vehicle to a nearby airstrip um, that was near the German base. And from the German base, or sorry, from that airstrip near the German base, we flew to Sanai and we landed at the airstrip at Sanai at seven o'clock in the morning on the 1st of January, 2022. <laughs> oh, how does it look, Sanai? What, what does the structure or the SA base actually look Yeah, so my first uh, impression of the base was, wow, that's far away. <laughs> so we, the airstrip was about two kilometers, maybe a kilometer away from the base. And that's another thing. It's very hard to tell in terms of distance on the ice because everything's the same color. But you could see the base from the, from the airstrip on, on the little hilltop and it was it's basically three pods connected via two links um, as we got to the base I, I later then found out that it's a two-story building inside and it's 250 meters long by I think eight to ten meters wide um, so yeah it's a, it's a pretty big building and it stands four meters above the ground on stilts so Eric, as the only meteorologist at base, um, what is the first thing in Antarctica that made you realize, okay, I'm not in South Africa? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I think for me, initially, it was the fact that the sun doesn't go down. <laughs> I know that's not necessarily meteorological, but it affects the weather in some forms. Um, so yeah, just seeing the sun constantly going around and around, it makes it very difficult to sleep. <laughs> Uh, I would say meteorologically wise, it is definitely call, something called drifting snow. So just to describe that to you is basically when the wind picks up to about 40 kilometers an hour, there are streaks of snow that glide over the surface, but they're all parallel to, to each other and it just looks stunning. So when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I'm here again. <laughs> so I would say drifting snow was my first 
uh, contact with non-South African weather. Yeah. In a previous conversation, you mentioned something about a second severe mm. storm. What happened? <laughs> yeah, so this was the first, the second storm that I experienced was the first storm on the continent. And I had taken some footage of a storm that came past and it was only blowing at 50 knots. So that's 100 kilometers an hour, roughly. Okay, ready? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> In this, in this storm that we faced, uh, the second storm, uh, the winds got up to 120 knots. So that translated into kilometers per hour is close to 250, 250 kilometer hour winds. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's F5 category hurricane. Yeah, so it was, it was quite an intense storm, um, but a little story to go with that. There were guys, traveling back from the ice shelf where the ship was located, bringing back some cargo. And they were two kilometers away from the base and the wind started picking up. The visibility dropped immensely. Fortunately, it was just, just before the winds got to, you know, that 120 knot level. Um, but they were stuck for roughly two days in, in that storm. Um, so we tried to get a rescue plan going to fetch them, to get them back to the base as quick as possible. But yeah, it, just things went wrong again and again. Eventually though, 